as a retired infantry soldier and combat veteran, I've seen my fair share of battles. I've witnessed the cost of war, the toll it takes on lives, and the sacrifices that are made by the men and the women who wear the uniform. We serve to protect the values this country was founded on. Democracy, freedom, and the rule of law. And that is why I am shaken to the core by the recent words of General Mark Miley, a man who knows firsthand what's at stake. General Miley said, and I quote, <clears throat> he is the most dangerous person ever. I had suspicions when I talked to you about his mental decline and so forth, but now I realize he is a total fascist. He is now the most dangerous person to this country, end quote. Miley said this not about an enemy overseas, but about Donald Trump, the man who once held the highest office in this land. I served in a country that fought against authoritarianism, and now we're being warned by our own top military leaders that Trump represents the very threat here at home. Miley's warning is serious, but it isn't new. He's been signaling for a while, even writing in The Atlantic about Trump's fascist tendencies. But this, this was different. It was personal. It was direct. And it was aimed squarely at the man he once served directly under. Trump is no longer a political figure. He's become, in Miley's words, the most dangerous person to this country. And Miley isn't alone. Retired Marine Corps General John Kelly, who was Trump's chief of staff, and also a gold star father to a Marine lieutenant who died in Afghanistan. He shared his own disgust nearly a year ago. Kelly said Trump thought soldiers who died or were wounded in combat were, quote, suckers and losers. He did not want to be seen with military amputees because, quote, it doesn't look good. This is a man who showed open contempt for a Gold Star family. Families who have lost loved ones in service to our country. And then there's Na uh, the, the Navy Admiral, uh, Mike Mullen, another former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who called out Trump's disgraceful behavior at Arlington National Cemetery. He said Trump's politicization of those hollowed grounds was a betrayal of the sacrifices made by those buried there. And for a veteran like me, Arlington is sacred ground. To hear that it was used as a prop for a political stunt is gut-wrenching. Generals like Mark Hartling and Wesley Clark have also warned us. Clark didn't mince words uh, when he said earlier this year, I do not say this lightly. The lives of American, every American, both in uniform and civilian, are at severe risk if Donald Trump wins this election. These men have dedicated their lives to protecting our country, and they're telling us straight up, Trump is a danger, not just to our democracy, but to the very lives of American citizens. Now, I know these men are careful with their words. I've served under commanders who understand that one wrong move one careless statement can have life or death consequences. So when Miley and Kelly and Mullen and Hartling and Clark all speak out in unison, we should be listening. These aren't politicians playing games with rhetoric. These are the people who have spent their entire careers defending this country, who know what real danger looks like. And yet, Trump is still being normalized. The corporate media, the Republican Party, somehow they're turning a blind eye to these warnings. I, I don't get it. I spent years in uniform fighting against enemies abroad, only to come home and see someone like Donald Trump, who tramples on everything we fought for, still being considered for the presidency, still being hailed and hallowed and championed. Look at look at the damage he's already done. Trump has insulted the military. He's cozying up to dictators like Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un, 
writing them love letters. Thank you. Oh, I'll set that here. While spitting, while spitting on the graves of those who gave everything to this country, encouraging Americans to turn against each other, using language that echoes the darkest chapters in history. He's called political opponents vermin and openly stoked anti-Semitism and racism. This isn't leadership, it's tyranny. I've seen what happens when leaders like that are allowed to stay in power. It's chaos, it's, it's violence, and it's suffering. Trump threatens everything we've bled for, everything this country stands for. These retired generals and admirals, men I've respected my entire career, are sounding the alarm, and I'll be damned if I don't stand with them. The question we need to ask ourselves is, are we going to listen? Are we going to take these warnings seriously? I am. Or are we going to let Trump tear this country apart? We won't survive another presidency, not, not with Trump in office. And that's not hyperbole, that is a fact. I've fought for this country before, and if it comes to it, I get the orders, I'll do it again. But right now, the fight isn't on some battlefield. It's here, at home, at the ballot box. And the only way to win is to keep men like Trump from ever stepping foot in the Oval Office again. This isn't about politics anymore. It's about the survival of our constitutional republic. It's about our democracy. It's about our citizens.